Praise the Lord. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, today as we all know, the church is celebrating the feast of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska and she is known as the Secretary of Divine Mercy and she is one of the greatest saints of this modern history, modern church. Let us reflect about her life today. She is an ordinary, uh, coming from an ordinary family in Poland and she was born in August 25th, 1905 and she died on the 5th of October 1938 when she was just 33 years of old. She died, she only lived for 33 years but she changed the history of the church. She influenced the whole church in such a way that everyone's life is influenced and changed because of what she contributed to the Holy Catholic Church through the Divine Mercy devotion. And she is the third one of, uh, ten, of the ten children. She is the third one. And they are coming from a very poor family. And um, they struggled. Her fa parents struggled. Her name was originally when before uh, becoming a nun, she was known Hel Helena uh, Kowalska. And uh, she, uh, when she was very small, she once when she was attending exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, when she was praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament, that is when she got her first calling. She was around 13 to 15 years of, years of age when she had the first calling to go and join the religious life. But then she kept it inside of her heart and then she continued her work. And since she's coming from a very poor family, when she was 16 years of age, she went and worked as a maid servant, as a work, a cook or a servant, a maid servant in one house and started getting some money. With that money, she, she supported her family. And when she was 18 and a half years of age, one day, along with her sister, she was dancing in a park to entertain people and maybe to get money and then and uh, support her family. She was only 18 and a half years of age when she was doing this dance in the park. And then suddenly she had a message from the Lord. She heard a voice speaking to her during that dance when she was dancing along with her sister. She heard a voice. Voice said, How long I will put up with you? How long you will keep putting me off? Jesus was speaking to her. How long you will keep putting me off? How long I will put up with you? And then she got shocked. She was so scared to hear that. Immediately, without even telling her parents or anybody, she ran to a cathedral church and she prayed there. And then when she was praying there, she waited for the message of the Lord. And then she heard a voice saying, immediately, instantly go to Warsaw and join a convent. Then suddenly, she instantly started the journey. She almost, she went, uh, started her journey to Warsaw, which is almost 85 miles away from her hometown. And she somehow managed to get a small amount of money. With that money, she traveled all the way to Warsaw. And she only collected her basic dress, basic dress, that's all. She had nobody, she, she did not inform her family. She has no one in Warsaw who is uh, her friend. She doesn't know where she is going to. And she just went because that's what she heard in the voice in the church, in the cathedral when she was praying. And when she reached Warsaw, when she got down from the train and she went to the first church she met. So there was one church, St. James Church. And she went to the church and she prayed there and went and spoke to the parish priest. And she told all the stories. Then parish priest knew that she has no place to go and she has just left from home and there is nothing in her hand. Then suddenly parish priest in, called one of the parishioners, one uh, good lady, and told her to keep um, this uh, sister Maria Faustina, Helena Faustina, there in their home. And then she stayed there for some months. And in between, she was going out and searching, knocking at all the doors of different congregations, religious congregations. 
asking them to admit her but everyone rejected her and at the end she came to one congregation called congregation of the sisters of our lady of mercy and she knocked at the door and their mother superior opened the door and she so initially wherever she went everyone used to say we don't need maids here because she looked very poor and she looked very pathetic therefore they said we don't need maids here but at the end when she joined this convent she came to this convent congregation of the sisters of our lady of mercy the superior said okay i will admit you provided at least you are vest for your vestition your cloth your vestments you have to manage to buy because the congregation was also poor and they can't afford to buy the cloth for her and they said you have to work here as a maid for some time and get that money and once you get money to buy the vestments we will admit you and then she stayed there as a cook and as a maid servant in the congregation in the convent for some time and her salary she collected everything once the, the said amount happened she informed the superior and superior admitted her and bought a vestment for her i mean the habit for her and then officially admitted her as the member of the congregation and that's how she joined the convent when she got joined the convent when she became a nun she was 20 years of age so all these things happened during her young age teenage days and then when she after be after she became a nun over there and then she was sent to different houses different convents and she was sent to lithuania to the capital of lithuania and there she was a cook in a convent though she was a nun she was a cook in a convent and she stayed for almost one year and after that she was transferred again back to poland and as she was coming back and when she came back she was sent to plock in poland when she came to plock in 1930 she for the first time she got became ill and she was uh, just maybe 25 years of age then she was just 25 years old and she became ill and then um she they came to know she was having tuberculosis to be uh, sorry tb and uh, just like saint Therese of lisio also had this tb tuberculosis and she uh, died and uh, but saint faustine also had the same tb and then uh, they kept her separately in a farmhouse for some months and treated her and after at the end of the treatment she got healed and then they admitted her back in the convent and she came back to the convent when she came back to the convent after this sickness the sickness was a very terrible experience she went through this terrible sickness and then she came back to the convent when she came back to the convent one day during the prayer jesus appeared jesus spoke to her and she has written this incident incident in her diary a very famous diary diary of saint faustina let us read this diary how uh, uh, she has explained about this apparition that is we can read from the diary uh, number 47 paragraph number 47 let us read in the evening when i was in my cell cell means they used to have uh, individual rooms like a cell and she was there in a cell and praying. I saw the Lord Jesus clothed in a white garment. And one hand was raised in the gesture of blessing. The other was touching the garment at the breast. Continue reading. From beneath the garment, slightly drawn aside at the breast, there were emanating two large rays, one red, the other pale, in silence, I kept my gaze fixed on the Lord. My soul was struck with, an, with awe, but also with great joy. My soul was struck with awe, and, but also with great joy, because she is seeing Jesus for the first time, and she saw this whole body of Jesus Christ, and she's explaining the whole details of it, and continue reading. After a while, Jesus said to me, Paint an image according to the pattern you see. Paint this image according to the pattern you see. With the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. So Jesus told 
my dear Faustina, that you have to paint an image according to the pattern you see. You know, when you read this, you have to remember in the Old Testament when Moses and uh, early people, the, the, the elders, they went up to the mountain, they saw heaven, and then when they came down, God said, according to the pattern you have seen on the mountain, you have to make the tabernacle. So this is not first time God is asking the human beings to do something according to the pattern they see. In the Old Testament, we see the same thing God asked Moses. According to the pattern they have seen in heaven, they had to make the Ark of the Covenant and also the, the, uh, the tabernacle. That's how the first tabernacle was created and that's how Jerusalem temple was created. Jerusalem temple is also according to the pattern that they have seen in heaven. Now, the same thing Jesus is asking in a different way. Paint an image according to the pattern you see now. The paint the image of me according to the pattern you see with the signature there should be a signature this name should this uh, uh, the, in some divine mercy pictures i have seen without this name i mean without this prayer jesus i trust in you that is not correct this picture should have the uh, the prayer jesus i trust in you i desire that this image be venerated this image should be venerated first in your chapel and then throughout the whole world. So this was the first message Jesus gave to St. Maria Faustina. Let's continue reading. I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. The soul who will sincerely venerate this image will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth. Those who venerate this image and pray in front of me asking for the divine mercy, they will have victory over enemies. Enemies means evil one here on earth, especially at the hour of death. Especially at the hour of death, my presence will be there. I myself will defend it as my own glory. I myself will defend. Jesus is promising to so those people who are having devotion to divine, divine mercy. Verse 49 when I told this to my confessor, so uh, uh, Maria Faustina, after this vision, she came and told the confessor. She has a confessor. Her confessor was Father Michael Sopoko. And uh, he is the one who was very powerful instrument in spreading the divine mercy devotion. But initially, when he, she came and told Father Michael uh, Sopoko, uh, he, uh, this is what she has written down. When I told this to my confessor, I received this for a reply. He told that refers to your soul. So, Michael, Father Michael did not understand the meaning, but he wanted to avoid complications. So, therefore, he interpreted this vision like this and said, that refers to your soul. He told me, certainly paint God's image in your soul. So, he said, paint the God's image in your soul. When I came out of the confession, after the confession, when, he came, when she came out, I again heard words such as these. Suddenly, again she heard the voice from Jesus. My image already is in your soul. My image is already in your soul. I desire that there be a feast of divine mercy. I want this image which you will paint with a brush. So Jesus is explaining. It is not in a, uh, in a spiritually, emotionally or uh, spiritually uh, painted in your heart. But with the brush you have to paint outside. So I want this image which you will paint with a brush to be solemnly blessed on the first Sunday after Easter. We know after the Easter first Sunday, now today in this in the modern time, it is the Divine Mercy Sunday. So, so Pope uh, John Paul II and declared that Divine Mercy Sunday on the first Sunday after Easter. That Sunday is to be the Feast of Mercy. It should be Divine Mercy Feast. So that is why Pope John Paul II declared the first Sunday after the Easter is Divine Mercy Sunday because it is the instruction from Lord Jesus. Continue reading. I desire that priest proclaim this great mercy of mine towards souls of sinners. I want all the priests to proclaim the great mercy of mine towards all the souls of my sinners. Let the sinner not be afraid to approach me. So this was the message. Let the sinner not be afraid to approach me. They should preach and speak about divine mercy. God is merciful. The flames of mercy are burning me, clamoring to be spent. 
i want to pour them out upon these souls the mercy the flames of mercy i want to pour it upon the sinners continue jesus complained to me in these words so jesus also complained because you are not trusting distrust on the part of souls is tearing at my insides the distrust on the part of souls those who are not able to trust some people do not go for confession thinking god will be angry some people do not want to come closer to god because god will not forgive their sins this is distrust jesus says distrust on the part of souls is tearing at my insides the distress of a chosen soul causes me even greater pain despite my inexhaustible love for them they do not trust me they are not trusting me even my death is not enough for them o to the soul that abuses these gifts the gifts of coming to the lord let's continue reading so this is what saint faustina jesus told saint faustina so after this after these messages were given saint faustina again went back to the confessor saint father michael and told him all these things then father michael had a doubt whether she is out of mind because she is speaking all these kinds of things which cannot be explained and she is having visions she is having and then she, father michael told her lovingly that you need to meet a psychiatrist and speak to uh, the psychiatrist and psychiatrist will go through all the uh, basic things and see make sure that you are not sick then she agreed she went according to what the confessor said she went to meet her psychiatrist and that lady that doctor psychiatrist she made her to go through loads of uh, i mean not treatment some kind of examination and uh, they did many therapy so many questions and so many, oh, so many things and after all these examinations the doctor said she is sound of her mind she is having no problem of a mental problem there is no mental breakdown there is nothing wrong and she is perfectly fine this is what the doctor said when doctor confirmed that she is perfectly fine that is when father michael uh, spoke or took her very seriously and he started supporting all the visions she had and then she uh, he introduced one artist whom he knew he introduced one artist and called him and sister maria faustina kovalska sat with the artist and explained whatever that she saw in the vision the face of jesus she explained everything um and then this artist drew many pictures but she was not happy with that and at the end he uh, picture and uh, draw one picture which she was happy and said this is exactly how i saw and that picture is seen it's a big framed picture is kept in the chapel in uh, in a convent in uh, in poland and uh, that picture looks almost uh, that is this is the picture that we uh, uh, that that is picked uh, kept on the in the church of uh, divine mercy there in poland and this is the original picture one of the the copy of the original picture that is depicted there in the church and uh, after that these picture copies were made everywhere and was shared and this there is something the some 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 scientist and some important people of the church they made a comparison study of this picture and the shroud of turin and they said lots of similarities with the face of jesus in this picture and the face of uh, jesus in the shroud of turin uh, is there are lots of similarities almost looks same so this is what they say and since to faustina never saw that shroud of turin and never happened to see that picture but she uh, found this picture and agreed that's how this um, the this divine mercy picture was uh, drawn and that copy of the picture is there still in the church and these copies were made by saint father paul michael and distributed in a convent and in the other places and she distributed everywhere and during those days when suddenly she started having the tb back relapsed tb and she started suffering from this tb terribly and when she was going through this tb tb and sufferings of her and one day she had a vision it was in 1936 when she was bedridden and she jesus told her you have to promote the divine mercy and you have to start 
uh, asking the priest and others to declare the first sat- Sunday after the Easter should be declared as the Divine Mercy Sunday. And then it should be consecrated. It should be uh, 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 promoted. This is what Jesus told. And then one day when she was praying, she saw a vision and she wrote it like this in the diary. Uh, 1044, we read like this in her diary she wrote, Suddenly, God's presence took hold of me. When she was praying, she was going through extreme pain and she was in the uh, uh, sanatorium. She was isolated and when she was praying, suddenly God's presence took hold of me. And at once I saw myself in Rome, in the Holy Father's chapel. And at the same time, I was in our chapel. She was writing down. She was at the same time in Holy Father's, in the Rome and in the chapel of Holy Father, and at the same time she was in the chapel in Poland. It looks like this is going to happen after the death. And then it's written like this, next one. And the celebration of the Holy Father and the entire church was closely connected with our chapel, in a very special way with our congregation. So she was talking about her congregation and the chapel and what is happening in Rome at the same time in our chapel. Continue. And I took part in the solemn celebration simultaneously here and in Rome. So in Faustina says, I took part in the solemn celebration simultaneously here and in Rome. And for the celebration was so closely connected with Rome that even as I write, I cannot distinguish the two, but I am writing it down as I saw it. So she cannot distinguish which one she, where she is, but she is in both places. And you know, like... um, um, you know, multi-location, so by location and all. So she was then both places. And I took part in the solemn celebration simultaneously here and in Rome, for the celebration was so closely connected with Rome that even as I write, I cannot distinguish the two, but I am writing it down as I saw it. Continue. I saw the Lord Jesus in our chapel, exposed in the monstrance on the high altar. Continue reading. The chapel was adorned as for a feast. The whole chapel was celebrated. I mean, I don't like a feast. On that day, anyone who wanted to come was allowed to come inside. The crowd was so enormous that the eye could not take it all in. So many crowd was gathered together. And continue. Everyone was participating in the celebrations with great joy and many of them obtained what they desired. Their prayers were heard. Continue. The same celebration was held in Rome in a beautiful church and in the Holy Father with all the clergy was celebrating this feast. And then suddenly I saw St. Peter who stood between the altar and the Holy Father. St. Peter is standing there. The whole clergy was there. The Holy Father was celebrating this feast along with all the people in Rome. And the same time the celebration is taking place in a convent chapel. Next, Next one read. I could not hear what St. Peter said, but I saw that the Holy Father understood his words. So, this is very important. This is what she wrote when she is nobody know her. When nobody knows her. She is isolated when she, with the TB. And she was isolated. She is in, sitting in a room. And only some copies of this picture of, uh, um, uh, picture of Divine Mercy was there. They were distributing it wherever it is necessary. This priest, Father Michael. Other than that, there is nobody knows about her. And then she said this uh, vision. You know what happened? In 2000, when St. John Paul II declared St. Faustina as the saint, he also declared the Divine Mercy Sunday Feast. And there were thousands of people flocked in the millennium celebration. And when she was and uh, uh, beatified, and then the whole in Rome, at the same time in her uh, in her hometown, in her in Krakow, in Poland, in the chapel, the same celebrations of celebration were taking place. In not only once, but many times, this celebration continued at the same time in Rome and at the same time when the Divine Mercy Feast was declared for the beatification of Maria Kolska and also for the uh, canonization of the saint. So this was a great celebration. Whatever that she saw, she saw it really happened. And it is believed that she was physically or maybe spiritually present at that time when John Paul II was celebrating it. And interestingly, 
Saint John Paul the Second died on the eve of the Divine Mercy Sunday, and he was beatified on the Divine Mercy Sunday, and he was canonized again on the Divine Mercy Sunday, and Saint John Paul the Second was one of the strongest proponent and devotee of the Divine Mercy. And Saint Faustina said, the Pope understood what Saint Peter said. Let's close our eyes. As the intercession of Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, and let us pray for the whole world to experience the divine mercy. <laughs>